Clark. You're listening to Houston Real Estate Radio. I'm your host, Shanna Register. And today we've got some important information for you with all that flooding that we've had. We've got, we're going to have some serious pest problems coming up. So that's what we're talking about today. I've got preventive pest control here. And uh, Jeremy Logston is talking with us. He's been on the show before. He always brings us great information. We did a whole show on bed bugs before. And we had so many people calling in talking about that show. Um, So today we're talking about something that we're seeing in the news. Uh, the Zika virus, right? It's a, um, it's something that's a, been a big concern outside of the U.S. Uh, major concern, uh, mostly South America, Central America, and we're uh, we have confirmed cases of it now here in the U.S. And it's a mosquito-borne here in Houston and Harris County. Harris County, yeah, we have eleven confirmed as of uh, according to. Um, the news uh, news uh, article that we were reading. Mm-hmm. Um, so it tra- primarily transmitted by mosquitoes, but the ones they were saying are, that are confirmed here are people that have traveled to some of these countries and, and have come here. Mm-hmm. Um, but it still poses a huge risk <clears throat> because they're migrating right. th- this way and um, remains to be seen because it's still so early in this uh, mosquito season as to if we see any confirmed mosquito cases of it. And this is really, so when someone gets this virus, only like one in five people see the signs of it, right? So you could be a carrier of it and not know it. Right. The the CDC says that 80% of people um, may not show symptoms enough to understand really that that they've been infected with it, Mm -hmm. but they are still carriers of it. And so if they're bit by mosquito, and you know, and then the mosquito goes off and does what they normally do mm-hmm. and bite others. It's it's a possible way of transmitting it that's what, that way, but it's still so early. There's concern. There's major concern for it, but you know, we're, we're tracking it, and um, different uh, counties are tracking it right now. Very much aware of it, but we do have confirmed cases, and so it's it's a um, and it's, it's concern. And it can be transmitted from per- person to person, right? Right. It, it can be also sexually as well as through the mosquitoes, which is the primary uh, concern because So you could be a are... carrier and be out there spreading it and not even know it. Exactly. It yeah. could get a little scary. Right. We'll see what happens with it. Okay, so the biggest, uh, right now with all the water, with all the flooding that's happened mm-hmm. in Houston, that concerns me because mosquitoes like to breed in water, right? That's it. They, According to what we call like our, uh, what conducive conditions are out there, right? With all insects, but namely mosquitoes right now, they, they lay their eggs in water. And so the more available moisture there is, standing water. And it's warm weather. Warm weather is warm weather's coming. And so, yeah, it, this is prime breeding grounds for mosquitoes. And so it's still raining today, right? But yeah. when this stops, it, there's going to just be a lot of areas where they're going to be able to breed. And so over the next few weeks, it's really going to be an issue as to what sort of uh, control measures we uh, that are available to the homeowners mm-hmm. is what they can do to help reduce the mosquito population. So what can homeowners do? I know you have the misting system that you can put mm-hmm. around your home. It's fairly expensive. So if, you know, some people have that, it's great if you can afford it and maintain it. But if you don't, you have another system that you can use where you, you actually go out and spray. Right. So talking about first what you what you said, the mosquito misting systems are great. They're, they're very effective if they're installed right. Mm-hmm. We come across a lot of them where we're fixing what previous companies have done because they didn't right. install them correctly but they have to be installed right and maintained properly but they can be very effective because we uh, you know you want to be in your yard you want to enjoy your home and your your backyard patio barbecues and that sort of thing so we will we'll, uh, put uh, these nozzles and tubing around and have the timer set to go off at certain amounts of time right. throughout the day and that really does a good job about reducing the mosquito population because mm-hmm. it we kind of target the areas where they're going to nest um, and reduce them that way, but it is expensive. Um, you know, it can be anywhere from you know two thousand to four thousand and up, just depending on how much area you want to cover, right? And um, how many nozzles we're going to install and that sort of thing. So that, like I mentioned before, it's kind of a barrier to entry for a lot of people. But the really effective, just as effective uh, measure is our backpack misting uh, that we do. Because we do a uh, like a backyard or a landscape barrier treatment mm-hmm. uh, that will target the areas where the mosquitoes nest and uh, during the heat of the day, and uh, that that really helps as well to reduce that population around the home. Is the West Nile virus still a concern as well? It is. Yeah, there, you know, we mentioned Zika, but there's West Nile, there's Zika, there's dengue, as well as chikungunya, which is another uh, thing that you're we're... just full of bad news. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, leave it to me, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> but these are all like concerns that um, th- that were that we, like most counties are monitoring for. I know Harris mm-hmm. County is, Galveston County is. They're monitoring for these um, hmm. these uh, mosquitoes carrying these diseases. But you know, it's it's a it's a big concern because it, it you know it can mosquitoes transmit disease. The Zika virus, um, the Zika virus has really the most dangerous concerns for pregnant women, right? Correct. Talk to us about that. Correct. So the, the the danger with the Zika is not so much if I got bit today or, or your, yourself, um, possibly right now, um, because most people aren't going to show, like I said, maybe one in five show the symptoms of it and maybe don't even know they're carrying it. But mm-hmm. With women, it's a different story because the, the Zika virus, and I'm, I want to be clear, I'm not a doctor, right? <laughs> this is just what what we're learning. I'm, I'm working with... Um, but you work with the CDC and other Yeah, we work with uh, Bear, and... which is a... On the, we're coming up with a really strategic and a smart way of handling all this. And, and um, what research is showing is that when women are, are uh, get infected with the Zika virus, it uh, it affects... Uh, if they become pregnant, it, it affects the, the fetal... Uh, the fetus... The, the brain tissue of, the, the, of their fetus. Causes birth defects. Causes birth defects, so yeah, it's microcephaly not, it's is what it's called. It's not just if they're pregnant when they get bitten, it's if they become pregnant for within the year after they're bitten, right? It, that's, that's, what we're, that's what we're reading. And so it's still really, like Zika virus has been around for a long time, mm-hmm. since the 40s, originated in Africa, but it's, it's migrated through different parts of, of the world and even different types of mosquitoes to where now, uh, the primary carrier of it is the mosquito. It's called the Aedes aegypti, which is the the yellow fever mosquito or the house mosquito. Um, and what makes it, what makes that kind of uh, significant is that they are mosquitoes that exclusively feed on humans. So mm-hmm. they are going to be most prevalent around your home. And so that's why you know the uh, the backpack misting uh, program that we have, the barrier treatment mm-hmm. the, uh, around the landscaping on the sections of the home where they're going to be nesting and, and trying to get into the home mm-hmm. that's what makes that so effective um because we're targeting the areas where those um ad's aegypti are you know going to be at trying to get to you us. know where the mosquitoes like to live right and yes. you go after <laughs> we do yeah <laughs> all right so so beware of standing water is there something you can do on big pools of water is there something you can put yeah. out in them yeah so yeah on standing water, there's several different things we can do. There's uh, different larvicides that we can. Some of this stuff is not going to recede for a while. Some yards are going to hold water. You know, what do you right. do about that? If you have a, if there's a, if there's a big area of standing water, there's uh, different things we can do. There's pellets we can put in there that that um, almost drown the the larval okay. stage of the the mosquitoes. Mm-hmm. It inhibits their progression. Okay. Uh, in becoming adult mosquitoes, mm-hmm. but you mentioned the most significant part is if you have any standing water, you know. Do your best to get rid of it. And around your house, if you think bird baths, uh, any buckets, um, or even gutters that aren't draining properly, yeah, are just breeding Ugh. areas for mosquitoes. Yuck. All right, let's talk real quickly about landlords and bed bugs because I know we yeah. did a whole show on that. But real quickly, let's remind um, landlords because that seems to be where the problem is with bed bugs: is uh, renters move out, more renters move in, and it just keeps spreading. Right. So if what we're doing, we have a monitoring program, but we're working with landlords to where when tenants are moving out, mm-hmm. usually they give up about a 60-day notice usually. Right. At least so, 30 days. At least 30 days. And so the best thing to do is for us to get our monitors in there okay. so that we can, while people are there, monitor to see if bed bugs are um, are there because okay. they have to be doing their normal behavior for us in mm-hmm. order to treat Don't for wait till properly. they've moved out because then the monitors won't do any good. Monitors so, won't work and, and it's very hard to treat for if there's not a food source there for so them. If the, um, so when the landlord gets 30 day notice they need to pull you guys in with your monitors mm-hmm. put your monitors in the house and then how long does that take? Five, ten days to decide? Well, we, or is it pretty quick? We, we, we want to make that wait that 30 days but okay. we but we'll come back in two weeks okay. to check them to check it and usually if there's activity there we'll know within two weeks okay and then um so after the 30 days when you find out for sure whether they're bed bugs once the tenants then move out and you know for sure there were bed bugs now you can treat it while the house is empty before the new tenants come in is that no we want to we want to treat before the tenants move out because we need to use their the bed bugs normal biology <laughs> to to treat but that'll okay. at least let us know that they're there 
Okay. All right. So I'm guessing they're going to have to get consent from, well, they probably already have consent, I guess, yeah. to treat. Okay. Yeah. There's usually no problem with treatment during it. Okay. Most of the time, the homeowners know that they're there. Okay. Right. But they didn't want to say anything. <laughs> so, you know, so they're, well, by the time we start doing that, they're, they'll, they're very helpful actually telling us right away, yep. They're over here. We've seen them here. Let me show you. Start showing oh, us stuff. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. And it's also peak season for termites. Termites, is, we're in our swarm season right now. And so this rain um, usually will help to escalate mm-hmm. the swarm. The swarm season's usually anywhere from just four to sometimes eight weeks. Um, eight weeks is like on the long end of it. But um, yeah, we're, usually this is the time where if, you've got, if you have them, if the colony gets too big to uh, sustain itself, they'll swarm and where as much as you know maybe half the colony so then they go to somebody else's house to live they'll go off somewhere (laughs) else right but usually that's when you'll know that sometimes you have termites for a year two years and not even know it Mm -hmm. because they're just in the walls but then all of a sudden you'll have hundreds if not a thousand you know start swarming out oh my gosh okay so then they need to call you for that too so they're gonna call you about the mosquitoes Mosquitoes. they're gonna call you about the termites that's right and they're gonna call you when they have bed bugs (laughs) <laughs> and we'll take care of it. And then we haven't even talked about spiders and ants. Spiders are, a num- are an ants are number and one roaches. source of new accounts. Roaches. Roaches. I hate roaches. Roaches are yeah. nasty. This flooding is what's going to cause those, the big roaches, the uh, American roaches. The flying roaches. To come in. A lot of times, moisture will create them to kick up and come in. And they and they don't die. They lay there on their back <laughs> and they keep right. kicking for a day. And it's like, nobody in my family will touch it or go near it. And we just we just keep poking it to see right. is it still is kicking? Is it dead yet? Is it it's dead still, yet? It's not dead yet. Okay, They're, so we just leave it until it's completely crusty and then trick. we'll move, move it to the trash. All right, quick trick. If you get a <laughs> toilet paper roll, to, like you'll get about this long toilet paper, two, uh-huh. hang it down, uh-huh. one of his legs will hook on it, then you can just roll it. <laughs> Put it in the toilet. In the toilet. Okay, I'm That's to what try I, that. my kids. They're, they're they're ninjas at that right now. That's what they do. All right, Jeremy uh, Logston with Preventive Pest Control. We appreciate you coming in. How can people reach you? Uh, our website www.preventivepestcontrol.com. Uh, you can call our, our phone numbers on the site there at seven one three nine four six nine two zero two. I just want to throw it out there because a lot of people are concerned about the Zika mm-hmm. uh, uh, situation. If you have a concern because maybe you are pregnant and and you know, you just want to know, hey, what can I do to take precaution? Mm-hmm. Any one of your listeners that calls in and says, hey, look, I, I, I'm pregnant. What can I do? We'll right. come out and do a free mosquito treatment for them. Awesome. Uh, we just want to be on the forefront of helping, you know, take care of it if we can. Yeah, because it's going to be a society problem if we have it a will lot be. of yeah. babies born it with, will be. with big problems. All right. Mm-hmm. We appreciate, appreciate you coming in. Well, it's good to be back. It's great to be here every time. All right. We appreciate it. We're here on Houston Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. So stick around. Imagine you and your family return from a tropical vacation to find that one of your pipes burst, flooding your entire house. Are you fully covered? Will you only receive $100 for your TV that cost you $2,000 just two years ago? Will your insurance company pay for you to live in a hotel while your home is being repaired? What if on that same trip, you lose your wedding ring? Will your home insurance coverage replace that as well? All insurance policies are not created equal. If you don't know the answer to these questions, you're not alone. Most people don't understand the gaps in their coverage until it's too late. Call Goosehead Insurance today and let one of our agents review your current policy to ensure that you are fully covered. At Goosehead Insurance, we understand the power of choice. Instead of working for a single insurance company, our agents have access to over 20 A-rated carriers. This allows us to craft a policy to fit your particular lifestyle, budget, and needs. It also enables us to reshop your policy in the future, if necessary, saving you time and money. No need to look for another agent. At Goosehead, we've got you covered. Our agents will walk you through each policy decision so that you have the coverage you need. If that's not reason enough, talk to one of our happy clients. Our client satisfaction scores are three times the industry average. To experience the Goosehead insurance difference, visit us online at goosehead.com or call us at 800-474-1377.